John Stalupi's Cars of Dreams Museum in Palm Beach, Florida is a well-known mecca of impressive classic cars. I'm Gary Bennett, General Manager of Lake Auctions, and I'm really excited to introduce our star consignment managers, Brian and Jason Rose, to John and his collection, which he has consigned with us at Lake Auctions for our first Scottsdale sale this January. I can't wait to see the expressions on their faces when Brian and Jason walk into the museum for the first time. I'm so proud we got these cars consigned out of the John Salupi's Cars of Dreams Museum. I can't wait to get you guys in there and see these. Let's get in there and check Let's it out. Let's do it, guys. presentation. Yes, it is. Holy cow. Every time I see it, I'm just so amazed. It's a breathtaking scene in here, and John's really done a good job creating his own little world with an extraordinary collection of cars. A lot of people have collections of cars, but they're just in garages. They don't have no look around. You could walk around here, and sometimes people say, wow, is this a car collection, or is this like a real museum? You know, everything about the place gives you a little bit more to look at than just a garage. And I think the cars look so beautiful when they're in their own environment. And I think that's the way all cars should be shown. Being here, walking around the Stalupi collection, it's way more fun than evaluating cars in some boring garage. I have right now about 130 cars in the collection. I just enjoy it, it's just, just fun. I'm all about making sure the cars are 100% so that if somebody does wind up with the car, they say, hey, that was a Stalupi car and they know that it's a great car. The 50s Chrysler letter cars in John's collection are stunning. These cars were the pinnacle of performance in their day. When I was young, there was one of the guys that had a letter car, a 1960 Chrysler 300, and he would let me take it for a ride. I didn't even have a driver's license back then. And I remember taking that car on the highway and nailing it. That car would pin you in the seats. Well, gentlemen, there's definitely no question about John's love for the Chrysler letter cars. This is one of my favorite parts of the museum with all these letter cars lined up here. I love these things, guys. You know, they're, 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 where are you going to come and find a 57, a 58, a 59? I mean, they're incredibly restored. They're great examples of what these are. They're all Hemi-powered. They have the same grill. It's an in-your-face, I'm king of the hill. Yeah. And at the time they were doing these cars, these cars were setting land speed records. And I almost forgot something, a 57 serial number one. That is incredible. They all had dual quads. They all had Hemis. They were all automatic, but yet they still were able to set land speed records. They're all spectacular cars. They're all that futuristic look. I mean, he's picked the best color combinations. He's got such a fine eye. He's picked the best of the best. And then to have serial number one and that 57 300C, nobody else has got that, that's for sure. Ram induction, you know, big fins, big mouth on the front, the way the dashboards were and the seats in the car, that car has everything. Guys, the best part of this is we're gonna take these to Scottsdale, Arizona settlement, no reserve, out of the John Stalupi Cars of Dreams collection and they're gonna bring huge money. I can't wait. wait. Awesome. The Cars and Dreams collection is just stacked with options. You can just look at the 69 Camaros he has. He has almost every iteration of that car that you can get. The 69 was like one of the special ones that they came out with. They had all the refinements, and I was almost gonna have a whole collection of Camaros. You know, in a Camaro brand, I like to have all my bases covered. I wanna have one of everything if I can and one that looks like everything, which I like. Hey, Brian, what are you doing, bud? Look at this thing. Hugger Orange 69 RSSS. This thing is bad. Now, I've had the chance to drive a lot of these cars, 
and it is just so exciting to get behind the wheel of these things. Every single one is a different experience, and it's like bringing you back in time. The great thing about John's collection is he has a ton of convertibles, and you can get in these things with the top down and just drive down the strip here in Palm Beach, and it is just a spectacular experience. Why don't you hop out of your favorite car and let's go look at something that's really cool. This C28 over here is the bomb. It is fully documented, certified, power disc brakes. It's got the DZ engine in it. Can you see the number in there? You can, right there it is. Oh yeah. And it's even got the smog equipment, which is, you just don't see that no, in these cars don't. anymore. It's beautifully restored. This car ought to rock the house. It will. Well guys, we got a ton more cars to get through. Yeah. All right. John has a spectacular 1966 GTO convertible. It's actually the first year the GTO became its own model and wasn't an option. So I've been a big GTO fan most of my life because of the performance aspect. That's the car today that everybody wants. They really are the bread and butter. Any good collection really needs a GTO. They are just iconic. John has a number of Chevy Bel Airs, and they're stunningly restored. Everyone knows and loves the 55 and the 57 Chevy Bel Airs. Everyone can relate to those in some way, and they're what I would call in the collector car world a true blue chip car. Those are one of the most iconic classic cars of all time, and every good collection should have one. Well guys, John's collection isn't only about 50s and fins, and here we have a really good example of that. It's a 2012 Lexus LFA Coupe. The 2012 Lexus LFA in this collection is a spectacular piece. It is an exclusive car, being one of only 500 produced. It's an understated supercar. Back when LFA first came out, we weren't allowed to sell them, we had to lease them. And then after a year, Lexus realized it was a mistake because people buy them cars, want to buy them and save them like Ferraris. Car runs beautiful, it's unbelievable, the quality is off the shelf. I mean, I think Lexus is eventually, as these LFAs, they're gonna be two, three, four million dollars, just like Ferraris. I love these cars. They're a little underappreciated, but this thing is carbon fiber everywhere you look. Tons of technology from Lexus in this thing. 4.8 liter V10. The exhaust note on this thing is just incredible. I've never seen one of these actually sold across the auction block. I haven't either. Only uh, 500 produced. What a remarkable car. I mean, it's just amazing. One of my favorites in John's collection is the Datsun 1600 convertible. That is something you never see. I was shopping around looking and always looking to try and find a Datsun. I couldn't even find one. It was so perfect. And when I opened up the hood and looked underneath the car and looked at everything in the car, it looked like it just rolled off the showroom floor. What a cool little car, just pretty as can be. Uh, I was looking at it earlier, it's got neat little features all over it. It's got this little hood scoop up front there. It actually draws air down into the radiator, keep that little 1600 motor cool. At the end of the day, this is special to me. These vehicles are so dissimilar. This is a multiple six-figure car. This is a more affordable car, and certainly something we can all relate to. Yeah. Most of us will never be able to relate to this. Yep. But I'm really thrilled to have it being offered. John Salupi Collection, Cars of Dreams, no reserve in Scottsdale, Arizona. Somebody's going to really enjoy taking this little guy home. This is my favorite car in the entire collection, guys. This 1958 Pontiac Bonneville is spectacular. It's a two-time AACA Senior Award winner. It's a one-time Pontiac Oakland Club International winner. It is just the finest frame-off professional restoration I think I've ever seen. I'd have to agree with you. This is one of my personal favorites, too. It's powered by a 370 cubic inch tri-power V8 engine with the super high dramatic four-speed transmission, and it's just stunning. It's a beautiful car. The 58 Pontiac Bonneville, I mean, it was just a big car. You would know that car, like just when it drove by with the chrome and the look of the car, everybody would say, that's a Bonneville, that's a Bonneville. The restoration on a car from a 1 to 10 is a 10. The car is incredible, and when you look at the car, you could see it. I mean, to try and make that car look like that today, I don't know, I bet you'll spend three, four $400,000. You look in this interior, and this dashboard looks like a jewelry box, and there's uh, one super cool feature that I like about this car 
It actually has a removable radio you can take to the beach. Oh, how cool is that? that? I didn't know that. The blue Bonneville. That car is just immaculate. I've never seen a car that well restored. And that's saying something. I've been around cars a long time and to see something that makes me kind of step back it is really surprising just how well that car is done. Speaking of great restorations, this Buick Electra right here is on par with this car, no doubt. This is black, which is super hard to do. You look down the sides of this thing, it is straight as straight can be, and this just has all the right options. Well, this car is also a two-time AACA Senior Award winner, and guys, it's been my experience to have a car restored of this size and of this quality, it's gonna cost north of $100,000 plus Easily. the cost of the car. Literally, I think, take this car, turn it upside down, and it would be as nice on the bottom side as it is on top. And that's what you look for in a quality car like that. These two cars, I hope when they sell, the same guy buys them both. They belong together, they're that good. This is a big car and it's got a big engine to back it up. It's a V8 engine and an automatic transmission. And as you'd expect, it's got all the bells and whistles too. With that kind of power plant, I bet she scoots oh. down the road pretty good. Yeah, I bet. All muscle car collections have different types of vehicles, but not many muscle car collections have a 1970 AMX. They're an underappreciated car with a big motor in a small body, and they're just a great muscle car. People are missing the boat on those cars when it comes to collecting them. They've got rarity. You don't come across them all that often. Not many collectors have them. And you won't see them on every intersection or every red light. I think they're cool. People ought to pay more attention. John has a lot of unique custom vehicles in his collection, and none are as spectacular as this 1962 Corvette Resto model. This car here is all custom interior in the car, custom upholstery. It's got the new electronic dashboard. It's all state-of-the-art new Corvette suspension, with big disc brakes on the car. This car just has everything in it. And to try and replace this car, I think it would be almost impossible. I mean, this is a credible car. One of the things that's most impressive about this collection is the sheer number of Corvettes. Any number of Corvette you could want, he's got in his collection. Corvettes are the cornerstone of any collection, and the great thing about them is they're a wonderful investment. They hold their value so well. I was a mechanic for Chevrolet, and I used to work on all the performance Corvettes. Back then, you could buy an L88 for probably um, maybe $1,000 more than you bought a regular car. Now in L88 cars, I mean, some of these L88s are worth a couple of million dollars. These cars sitting side by side are such un so unique to me because there's 10 years difference, 58 versus 68, completely restored NOS car versus an original car. When it comes to those two Corvettes, it's remarkable to me how those cars have evolved over that short time frame. The difference is so significant in the way the cars would drive, the way they perform. I mean, the L88's got twice as much horsepower as the 58 has. An L88 is a car that when they built that engine, that car was really made to run. Nobody would understand it. Everybody thought people were cheating. They couldn't be right. They couldn't have that much horsepower. They couldn't do that quick. But that was like a secret weapon that General Motors came out with. And that car today is just mind-boggling. Yet I don't want that being said to take anything away from what that 58 represents and what it really is. So in my mind, that car epitomizes what everybody really wanted back in the late 50s. Both are V8 powered. That's the second generation V8 is a 283 with two fours, 270 horsepower. And this is the L88, aluminum block, aluminum heads, race engine, if you will, that's over 500 yeah. horsepower. Disc brakes versus drum brakes, independent rear suspension versus solid rear axle. In the early days, the Corvette's whole design kept changing. It was much nicer and more user-friendly for the people. Within those 10 years, the technology really had changed. You go back to the 58, it's really a nice driving sports car, got good performance. You go to the 68 and that thing is a straight up race car for the street. 
They came a long way in 10 years, Gary. I mean, that's a sports car, and this is a race car for the street. Right it now. really is. This is one of 80 produced. Yeah. It's a spectacular pair, and to see them sitting here together in this setting is unbelievable. Yeah. The variety of this collection is unprecedented. It's got muscle cars, 50s fins cars. There's something for everybody. As you walk down the aisles of John's collection, you can tell he's a Cadillac guy. I've even heard him say when he was a kid, when he saw somebody roll up in a Cadillac, it was like you've arrived. When I was a kid, I was a mechanic, and these are the kind of cars I worked on. I lived in Brooklyn, and when you drive around Brooklyn, whoever had a Cadillac and was driving around with the top down, forget it. He was like, you see that car? You see that guy? Every time I think about it, you know, you have a beautiful car like this, you always wind up with beautiful ladies alongside of you. People would just show up with a Cadillac, and it was like, here I am. How you doing? The thickness of the seats, you get in a normal car, the seats are thin, you get in a Cadillac seat, I mean, now you're talking, I mean, you're really sitting down on like a couch, you know, driving a couch. What's so special about them is they're just elegant. You look at these cars and when you pull up somewhere, you are arriving in a Cadillac. In the early days, if you had a Cadillac, that meant power, money, there's nothing like it. He's got some of the finest Cadillac convertibles I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of cars. He's got a magnificent yellow Cadillac convertible. The restoration quality is off the charts. It's a beautiful color combination. The Cadillacs back then weren't made for performance. They were made for comfort, beauty, and appeal. Take that car to the country club, you get parked right in front of the door every single time. One of my favorite cars is the dual gears. They only made a few of those cars. This particular one has a Hemi in it. They have the look, they have the performance. They seem like they were able to put all the different pieces together. These cars have everything. John has some really neat stuff around here, and it looks like there's all this serious muscle around, and then you walk around the corner, and the candy truck is right there, and it just, you know, brings you back to a, a kid. I seen the vegetable truck back then. We had ice cream trucks back then. So when I seen this candy truck, I says, I gotta get this. It's got thousands of dollars worth of candy on it. If somebody gave me the truck, it's worth something with the candy. Who wouldn't want something like that? The paddy wagon's a little different. It's, it's, it's very special and very unique, and I remember raising my teenage children. I'd like to have had that when I had them. It's even got a mannequin of a gangster in it. It makes the place a, a lot of fun. All right, Gary, you've taught Jason and I a ton of stuff about the vintage cars. Here, we have some late model stuff that we want to talk to you about. This is a 2018 Dodge Demon. This is a factory drag car. I mean, it's got anything you could want to go fast at the strip. Nine and a half second quarter mile, zero to 60, in less than three seconds. It's crazy. Yeah. The 2018 Dodge Demon in this collection is fantastic. It's very, very low mileage. We're talking single digits here. This thing's barely out of the factory. It's got nine actual miles on it. It's still got some items here in the interior that have never been dealer prepped. You've got uh, some protective plastic on some of the surfaces. If it weren't for the fact that it was so low mileage, I'd like to take it out and run it around on the drag strip. Yeah, I'd like to feel what that 840 horsepower is like. When they first came out, I didn't even take one for myself because, you know, I wanted to sell them to the public. And then the cars became so popular, and I couldn't believe where the car went to and how it held its value. And I believe that that car is always going to hold its value. Those cars are 800 horsepower, some of them, and it, all you do is hit a switch. It's like crazy. Behind us here, this is more of uh, a road car. This is the Boss 302 Laguna Seca, whereas the Demon is built for the drag strip. This would be more for a road course. It's got some trick features to it to make it a little more rigid on the track. It's got a special cross brace in the back where the rear seat is no longer there. It's got a splitter out front. It's also got launch control, so you can just hammer it down, pop the clutch, and she'll take off for you. Over here, that is a 1,000 horsepower Corvette. The orange Yanko Corvette that John has, it's been taken by an aftermarket company uh, that's done a lot of upgrades to it to now make it have over 1,000 horsepower. You know, a thousand horsepower, it's like, you know, 
it's unheard of. It's like, you know, why do people don't take horse and buggies to California anymore? You'd rather take a jet plane. Of course, all the power and the speed to get there in time, and that's what the Dalton horse battle makes me think of. That's a little flashy for the street and a go-fast car. Yeah, I think this is wonderful, guys, and we're going to sell them all at no reserve in Scottsdale. Yep, can't wait to see them on the block. Yep. I couldn't be more excited about having this collection for our Scottsdale auction in January. Scottsdale in January is the hub of the collector car world, and to have this collection there, Lake Auction being there for the first time, it's going to be great. We're doing it during auction week in January. We're going head to head with the big boys, and we're incredibly excited about that. Lake Auctions is very well equipped to handle a collection of this size. We just have this massive bidder base located all around the world due to our partnership with Ritchie Brothers. That They came on board about two years ago and we're coming out big time in Scottsdale this year with this collection. I think they really are great car people and they know the automobiles and they know quality cars and they know what's really right. And I think Lake to be in this business and Richie Brothers, that they're doing this now, I think they should have done it a long time ago. It just seems like a natural fit to put these two together. So I think what we have here is a synergy that is unprecedented and incredibly powerful and destined for success with the John Salupi Cars of Dreams collection. John is very well known uh, throughout the classic car industry and we're looking forward to bringing his reputation and just him as a person uh, to some new people. These cars deserve their own look, just like this car museum here. We're trying to make this auction look a little bit different than any other. People could go in, they could look at cars, they could sit down, they could talk about it, they have a lounge to hang out in. We're gonna sell John's cars, half of them prime time on Friday and half of them prime time on Saturday. Our goal is to maximize the potential of every vehicle that we have and to sell it. And John gives us the ability to do that.